Hello, and welcome to this SRC Learning Essential Series video about MPLS administrative groups versus shared risk link groups. If you are not familiar with the Service Routing Certification Program, you can learn more by visiting our website at www.networks.nokia.com slash src. In the following presentation, we will describe MPLS administrative groups and shared risk link groups. Using detailed examples and our lab environment, we will focus on the key differences between these two MPLS path diversification methods. When using MPLS primary and secondary paths, care should be taken to avoid sharing links between them. If a secondary path shares links with a primary path, and failure occurs on any of those links, both paths will go operationally down and cause an undesired traffic outage. There are several options available to maintain path diversity, and we will focus on two of these, using administrative groups and using shared risk link groups. Administrative groups can be defined based on any physical or logical constraint that reflect the characteristics of the links. They are also called link colors, and links can simply be associated with the different colors such as blue links, green links, and so on. In the diagram, links are added to the administrative groups blue and orange. An LSP is set up where the primary path requires 400 megabits of bandwidth and includes blue links, while the secondary path excludes blue links. As you can see, the use of administrative groups provides path diversity. However, notice the primary path chose the upper plane, which had the lower unreserved bandwidth total. This is because the primary path is limited by the administrative group restrictions. Shared Risk Link Groups, or SRLG, add another dimension to establishing controlled redundant paths. The primary path is not bound by the SRLG constraint, so CSPF can choose the optimal path for the primary, while taking into account any other constraints that might be in place. If any of the secondary paths are configured with the SRLG constraint, CSPF first analyzes the primary path and determines whether any of its links are members of an SRLG. It then calculates a secondary path that avoids the links in the same SRLG. Here we have the same network as before, but modified to reflect shared risk link group memberships. The redundant links in the upper and lower planes are now members of different SRLGs. An LSP is configured with the primary path requiring 400 megabits per second of bandwidth and the secondary path with the SRLG constraint. Because the primary path is not bound to any SRLG constraint, CSPF simply determines that more bandwidth is available on the lower plane and thus establishes the primary path over the R1, R3, R5, R6 path. Accordingly, the secondary path is automatically disjointed from the links in the lower group and therefore follows the upper plane. Next, we will move to our lab environment to test the difference between administrative groups and SRLGs. The network will consist of six routers and all links in the upper plane are assigned to the SRLG named upper as well as administrative group blue. All links in the lower plane are only assigned to the SRLG lower. We will use an LSP configured with a reserved bandwidth constraint of 400 megabits per second to test the difference between administrative groups and SRLG. Okay, let's start by verifying the admin groups and SRLGs on the routers. Here on R1, running show router IF attribute admin group, we can see that the blue admin group is created with a value of 1 and the orange admin group is created with a value of 2. Running show router IF attribute SRLG group, 
shows that the upper group is created with a value of 1 and the lower group is created with a value of 2. To save time, the required admin groups and SRLGs have already been created on all other required routers. Next, to view which groups are assigned to each interface, we can run configure router MPLS followed by the info command. And matching the diagram above, we can see that interface 2R2 is assigned to admin group blue and SRLG group upper, as well interface 2R3 is assigned admin group orange and SRLG group lower. Alright, let's now look at the LSP configuration. For this I simply need to scroll down to see the LSP named 2R6. Notice the LSP is configured for CSPF with the required bandwidth equaling 400 megabits per second. The primary path is set to include blue links while the secondary standby path is set to exclude blue links. Next we can run show router MPLS LSP followed by the name of the LSP and in this case that's 2R6 path detail. Note this is an excellent command to view various details of an LSP and its associated primary and secondary paths. First we can see the LSP is operationally up and scrolling down we can view details on the primary path including the actual hops. As expected the primary path does not select the plane with the greatest available bandwidth because it is restricted by the admin group constraint. It therefore must include the blue links and takes R1, R2, R4 and R6 route. Scrolling further reveals the standby path is operationally up and is fully disjointed from the primary path by excluding the blue links and taking the route R1, R3, R5 and R6. Now we can reconfigure the LSP to use SRLGs and then view the differences. So LSP to R6 info. On the primary path we only need to remove the include blue statement. No SRLG config is needed here because we don't want the primary path bound by the SRLG constraint. Primary loose no include. For the secondary path we need to remove the exclude blue statement as well as add the SRLG constraint. Secondary lose to no exclude secondary lose to SRLG running the info command one more time confirms that the primary is no longer configured for admin groups and the secondary standby path is configured for SRLG. Finally, we can quickly resignal the LSP by restarting it. Alright, let's view the details of the LSP one more time. So show router MPLS LSP to R6 path detail again and scrolling down we can see the primary path is now not restricted by any SRLG constraint 
and therefore chooses the plane with the greatest value of unreserved bandwidth. So it takes the R1, R3, R5, R6 route. Looking at the secondary, reveals a path of R1, R2, R4, and R6, which is fully disjointed from the primary path. So, in this case, MPLS first analyzed the primary path, and noticed it went over links that are in an SRLG group called lower. It then calculated a new path that excluded any of those links. And this concludes the lab on admin groups versus SRLGs. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Content for this video was adapted from the Nokia Multi-Protocol Label Switching course. You can access the complete MPLS course via any of the three learning formats shown on this page, as well as get remote private access to a service router lab to complete the course lab exercises. If you are interested in obtaining an SRC certification, this table identifies the recommended courses and required exams for each of the five available certifications in the program.